Ruchem Aboyim. Thank you very much for attending. Welcome to our home. <clears throat> the um, lecture today on my thought, I think is something that we all, in one form or another, the title of the lecture is, Can We Be Happy Today? And that's the question. Can we be happy today? I think this is a question that more than a few people are asking themselves. There's a saying, you know, cheer up. Things could be worse. And so I cheered up, and sure enough, things got worse. I don't care whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, pro-vaccination, anti-vaccination. I could go on, but we all know the drill. And now when we thought that things couldn't get much worse, well, Putin decides to invade Ukraine. We are waiting and watching, wondering what China will do next. And of course, there's always North Korea and Iran in the shadows just, just to keep us on our toes. God has blessed us with a world filled with prosperity and blessings. And instead of enjoying our good fortune, we find ourselves looking for new and better ways to screw everything up. But why? Why are success and happiness such a hard pill for us to swallow? It's almost as if we are telling God, thank you for all of our blessings, but you know we both know that we really don't deserve it. So then we tell God, listen, don't worry about punishing us for our disobedience and lack of gratitude. We're going to punish ourselves. We're going to try to turn all of your many blessings into curses. With all this negativity in the world, are we allowed to be happy? How are we supposed to divorce ourselves from all the anger and abusive rhetoric that surrounds us on many sides? Somehow, as I look back on my life, it seems that the past was different. But the question is, was it really different or were we just a little naive? Has the world changed? Are people really so different or are we just saying things today that we barely had the nerve to think about before? You know, I grew up with parents who were Holocaust survivors. Then there was the Cold War. As a young child, I still remember clearly thinking as I crawled underneath my desk at school that I would never live to become an adult, to get married, or to have children of my own. Then came the 60s, with all the riots in the major American cities, the Vietnam War and all the protests on college campuses around the country. The world has always been a dangerous place. Nothing much has really changed. Think of olden times, when wars were, were common everywhere. What did you really own? Anything that you had could be taken for you by force at any time, even your life. Might made right. Well, it's still like that today in many places in the world. Africa, South America, Syria. But then there was always the south side of Chicago, Harlem, or Watts. In places that we live, we may feel secure, safe. But is that the exception or is it the rule? The world has become a reality show. And we are the contestants. Let us all pray that we are not canceled. So let us get back to my initial question. Can we be happy today? So to answer that question, let us look first in the, in the first book of the Torah and examine the life of the one person featured in the narrative more than any other, Yosef. His life is really a soap opera. His mother dies when he's only eight and a half years old. He is hated by his brothers. They sell him into slavery when he is only 17 years old. Thinking things couldn't get any worse, he is falsely accused of raping his master's wife. He is convicted and thrown into a dungeon. There he interprets the dream of the butler and he sees it as a ray of hope. But it's not until two years later that the butler finally remembers Yosef to Paro. The story took 13 years to unfold. But then, when things had finally hit rock bottom, suddenly and in an instant, God brought, God brought his salvation. Yosef would spend the last 80 years of his life in tranquility. His days were filled with dignity and honor as the viceroy of Egypt, surrounded by his numerous grandchildren and his loving family. What do we learn from Yosef? Never give up. He never gave up. No matter how hopeless and difficult the situation seemed, his thoughts were always connected to his relationship to God Almighty. But there is something even else that we learn from Yosef in his story. He was always proactive. He tells Potiphar's wife in the portion of Ayesha, he, referring to Potiphar, 
his master, and entrusted me with everything he owns. No one in this house has more power than I. He worked himself up to that position, but how? With hard work and perseverance. Even though he was a slave, he always tried to be relevant. He cared. His surroundings may have changed, but he never did. He always lived up to his Hebrew name, Yosef, to add. He was, always, he was never content with who he was yesterday. He always strove to be even better today, both in the eyes of man and in the eyes of God. We read the same wording when Yosef is sent to the dungeon. There, too, it says, Soon the warden had placed all the prisoners in the dungeon under Yosef's charge. Yosef took care of everything that needed to be done. When we witness, What we witness is that Yosef always stayed connected to God. But at the same time, again, he was always proactive. He moved to the ball. He didn't wait for the ball to come to him. Wherever he found himself, he felt that whether he understood it or not, that was where God wanted him to be at that time. He understood that somehow, in some way, every experience that one has in life is part of their journey to success in paradise. The key to my question about happiness is the word today. We are so busy looking backwards and analyzing the past or, or trying to look so far into the future that we miss the only thing that we really have any control over today. The Torah repeats again and again the Hebrew word hayom, today. This is to tell us that we should live our days, our lives, one day at a time. You know, I see life as a portrait. On the canvas is a picture of a sunny spring day. The sky is blue with a wisp of clouds. There is a tree spreading out its branches, offering shade for all that desire it. A bird is perched on one of its branches. You, you can almost hear it chirping. The tall grass is moving ever so slowly in the gentle breeze. How serene. But know that underneath the tall grass, there is a war going on. All types of insects and rodents are all fighting for their survival. What I have described is a portrait of our lives. We have a choice. We can live above the grass or below it. The choice is ours. It would seem like a no-brainer, <laughs> but somehow many of us cho choose to join the battle. But why? It's almost as if we don't believe that we deserve to be happy. Well, I think that we do deserve happiness. Living life is a challenge, and for the most part, the people that I know do a pretty good job of it. There's a story told of the Alter Rebbe, the founder of Chabad Hasidus. He was on his deathbed. In the room with him was his grandson, whom he had raised. He would become the third Lubavitcher Rebbe, the Tzemach Tzedek. The Tzemach Tzedek was praying the evening prayer in the same room where his dying grandfather was resting. He prayed his prayers with a very solemn melody. The Alta Rebbe waited until his grandson had finished his prayer, and then he rebuked him. He said that one should never pray with sorrow. Heaven returns to a person only that which they have sent up. He then told them the famous Hasidic aphorism, Trach good will sein good. Think good, and it'll be good. I don't know what tomorrow will bring. If it's good news, then great. I'll be there early, clean the house, dress up, prepare some snacks, and, and get ready to make the experience as pleasurable as possible. And if it's bad news, well... I'm certainly not going to get ready for misery any earlier than necessary. When misery comes, I may not even be home. And if I am, I certainly will be late. I'm not answering the door. If he wants to come in, he's going to have to break a window or find some other opening. I am not feeding him or offering him any hospitality. If at all possible, I will ignore him completely. If I'm successful, who knows? <laughs> he may leave and never come back again. In Pirkei Avos, The Ethics of the Fathers, Ben Zoma says, Ezehu Asher HaSameach Bechelko, who is a rich man, one who is happy with his lot. At first glance, the advice is very simple to understand. The only way for a person to be truly happy is to be content with what they have. Great advice. 
But the wording in Hebrew teaches us even more. You see, the Hebrew word sameach, happy, is very precise in what it is teaching us. Imagine if someone gave you $100,000. Well, I would think you would be happy. How about before you received that money? Were you happy? Maybe not. And then after you received the money, are you still happy? Or are you thinking, hey, you know, maybe you could have even gotten more money. So when are you really happy? Only in the present. And that is why, that is the reason why we call it a present. We need to train ourselves to live in the moment and to appreciate the many blessings that we have. The past is gone. It may have taught us something, but it can no longer hurt us. The future will not exist if we do not take care of the present properly, as Winston Churchill said to Parliament in 1942. If we don't stop arguing about the past and the present, we will not have any future. We need to stay in the moment for so many reasons. You know, there are obstacles on the road, but that doesn't have to be a negative. There is a saying that if you're on a road and there are no obstacles, then know that you are probably on the wrong road. Overcoming challenges, those obstacles in life, in reality is one of those things that makes and keeps us happy. <clears throat> when the verse in Prikiovos asks, Ezehu Asher, who is a rich person? The Hebrew letters in the word Asher, a rich man, are Ayin, Shin, Yud, and Resh. They are an acronym for Enayim, your eyes, Shinayim, your teeth, Yodayim, your hands, and Raglayim, your feet. If a person is not healthy, <laughs> then even if you have all the money in the world, they are not truly rich. So if today in this moment you are healthy, then enjoy your blessing. But what if it changes? What if your health fails? Then deal with the situation when it does, not before. Why be OCD? It just makes a difficult situation even more difficult. You know, whenever I feel a little down, I look at little children. They are, for the most part, happy. They never walk anywhere. They always seem to be running. They are in a hurry to get to their next adventure. Their speech is rushed and excited, and everything is so important. And maybe most important of all is that they don't bear a grudge. They may argue one minute and yet be best of friends the next. Even if they are angry at you, it's amazing what an ice cream cone or a candy bar can accomplish. No problem is worth passing up the treats of life. So can we be happy in this crazy world that we live in today? I think the answer to that question is yes. We are told by King David in Psalm 100 in Tehillim, Ivdu es Hashem b'simcha, serve God with joy. Yes, the world may be going nuts, but you don't have to ride on that train. Take your own transportation or just walk. We don't have to let the world bring us down. We can at least attempt to bring the world up to our level. So how can we succeed in being happy today? To begin with, by taking lessons from Yosef. Even though he was languishing in prison, still he was able to recognize that someone else needed his assistance. Start with, your, start with a smile. Greet people with a pleasant demeanor. Light their candle with yours. Spread the optimism. Joy can be contagious. Sorrow is always an orphan. So let us make a conscious effort to be happy each and every day. There is a Hasidic saying that says, Simcha poritz geder, that happiness breaks down all barriers. And with that, let us help to herald in the coming of Mashiach Tzakeinu quickly and in our time. Again, thank you very much for attending, for listening. God should bless you and yours with all that's good, happiness, health, and success. Shabbat Shalom. And by the way, we won't be, it will not be a class next week. So let me wish you a frail chapurim. Drink until ad shalom You don't know who and what's going on. Just keep smiling. God bless you and be well.